welcome to Classic Comedy of Old Time Radio. I'm your host, Ron Ecklebarger. Here now is Lucille Ball and Richard Denning in My Favorite Husband. This is episode number 90, which is entitled Selling Dresses. It originally aired on May 28th, 1950. It's time for My Favorite Husband, starring Lucille Ball. Jello, everybody! <laughs> Yes, it's the Gay Family Series, starring Lucille Ball with Richard Denning. Transcribed and brought to you by the Jell-O family of desserts. J-E-L-L-O, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. That's Jell-O. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O puddings. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O tapioca puddings. Yes, sir. And now, Lucille Ball with Richard Denning as Liz and George Cooper, two people who live together and like it. And now, let's look in on the Coopers. It's evening, and we find Liz and George in the living room. George is reading the newspaper, and Liz has just sat down on the arm of his chair with something obviously on her mind. Hi, George. Hello, dear. How are you, George, baby doll? Mm -hmm. Fine, Liz. (laughs) Don't blow in my ear, Liz. That (laughs) tickles. Okay, I won't. Oh, what are you doing, putting your ear next to mine like that? (laughs) You have such a shell-like ear. I thought maybe I could hear the ocean roar. (laughs) Look, little girl, take your bucket and shovel and go play somewhere farther down the beach. George. Yes? I want to talk to you about something. Okay, Pumpkin, what is it? Well, I was downtown today, and I just happened to go by Kramer's department store, and do you know what they had in their front window? Tell me, tell me, I can't wait. A spring dress. What won't they think of next? (laughs) Oh, it was the cutest dress I've ever seen, and just exactly what I need to fill out my spring wardrobe. Oh, that's nice. I really wanted to buy it, but I thought I ought to tell you about it first and get your reaction. Now, now, what do you think I ought to do? I think you ought to go in and put it on and show it to me. Why, George Cooper. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry, honey. I I thought you'd already bought it. Apologize. Well, after all... Apologize or I won't put the dress on and show it to you. (laughs) I thought so. That's the way it always happens. How much? It was only $39.50. $39.50? George, you're getting red in the face. Don't bulge your veins at me. (laughs) But thirty-nine fifty for one little dress. But George, now wait till I tell you. I made twenty dollars by buying that dress. You made twenty dollars. Uh huh. I bought the dress on sale at Kramer's for thirty-nine fifty, and the identical same dress is selling at Gordon's for fifty-nine fifty. So I made twenty dollars. <laughs> Yes, but you don't have that $20. I know I don't. I spent it on a hat to go with the dress. <laughs> oh, Liz, for heaven's sakes, fifty nine fifty for one outfit. But, George, I have to have some new clothes once in a while. You're going to take that dress back to Kramer's and get your money back. Oh, George. I hate to be harsh, Liz, but we've got to stop this spending spree you're on. Well, couldn't we stop it next time? No. I've got to teach you a lesson. Now, you don't need that dress at all, so you can just take it back. But it's such a cute little dress. Sorry? It's navy blue with white polka dots. (laughs) No, Liz. It's got a little white collar with a sash in the back. You're breaking my heart. (laughs) Crying won't get you anywhere. (laughs) Well, it doesn't hurt to try. (laughs) Okay, George, I know when I'm licked. I'll take the dress back. Oh, 
Oh, pardon me, miss. Could you tell me where the refund department is? Oh, there goes somebody's commission. Through that door there. Thank you. Is this the refund department? Yes. Can't you see the sign on the door? (laughs) If you're not satisfied with your purchase, your money will be (laughs) cheerfully refunded. (laughs) Cheerfully refunded? Yes. (laughs) Well, look, laughing boy. Uh, I'm Mrs. George Cooper, and I'd like to return Oh, never mind, I know. Everybody who comes in here wants to return something. Hand me dresses, hand me shoes, hand me bags, hand me coats. I hope they hand you a handkerchief once in a while. (laughs) All day long, I make out return slips. I had to go to the doctor last week. I I was seeing charger plates in front of my eyes. (laughs) Well, won't take very long. Just give me my money, please. Uh, certainly. I, I make out the form. The dress was too large for you, hmm? No. Too small? No, it was just right. The color didn't match the drapes when you got it home. <laughs> no, the color was wonderful. The style was bad. No, the style was excellent. Your cat was allergic to the material. I don't have a cat. Mrs. Cooper, let me get this straight. The dress was the right size, the cut was fine, the style was wonderful, the color was out of this world. In other words, the dress was simply dreamy. Yes, I loved it. Then what are you doing in here? I'd like my money, please. Your sign says your money is refunded if you aren't satisfied. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Cooper. I can't give you the money back on that dress. Why not? Because you are satisfied. Now, be honest with me. Why do you want your money back? Well, if you must know, my husband didn't like it. What's the matter? Can't he wear polka dots? (laughs) I mean, he didn't like that I bought it. He says we can't afford to spend the money. Yeah, but that's no reason why Mrs. Cooper, this 14-story mass of steel and concrete was built with money that husbands can't afford to spend. (laughs) I'd like my money, please. Look, I've been buying clothes at your store for 10 years, and I'll buy for another 10 years. But right now, I'm in the middle of a temporary clampdown. Very well, Mrs. Cooper. Here's your money. Oh, no, I, I forgot Your money is cheerfully refunded. (laughs) Thank you. Ah! Liz, Liz, wait a minute. Well, Iris Atterbury, what are you doing here? Spending too much money just like you are. Oh, you're wrong there. Remember that little polka dot dress I bought? Yeah? George made me bring it back. From now on, whenever I buy anything, I'm going to put it on the end of a long elastic. Did you take credit, or did they give you your money back? Oh, I got my money. Let's see. 20, 30, 40, 50. Wait a minute. 59, 50. They gave me too much money. Well, that doesn't sound like Gordon's to me. Gordon's? Isn't this Kramer's? It was Gordon's when I came in. Oh, I brought my dress back to the wrong store. I paid thirty-nine fifty for it at Kramer's, and now Gordon's have given me fifty-nine fifty. Well, there's only one thing to do. Sure. Run and spend it before they catch you. <laughs> no, I'll have to take the money back. It isn't fair to Gordon's. Or is it? Uh-oh. Liz, I can hear the wheels grinding from here. What are you dreaming up? Well, look, Iris. I bought the dress at Kramer's, and I paid for it. So they aren't out anything, right? Right. And I brought it back to Gordon's, and they'll sell the dress for the same amount they paid me, so they won't be out anything, right? Right. And I've got $20 extra. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> well, it is. I'll see you later. Well, Liz, wait. Where are you going? Where else? Back to Kramer's for more dresses. <laughs> <laughs> 
You never know what Liz Cooper will think of next. But here's something she ought to think of if she wants to make up to George. It's the swellest dessert in many a summer. Jell-O pudding ice cream. You can use any flavor Jell-O pudding. Jell-O chocolate, vanilla, or butterscotch pudding. Combine the pudding with milk and sugar. Cook as directed and chill. Fold in fluffy whipped cream and freeze. Serve with delectable fresh sliced strawberries. You'll find the complete recipe for this new dessert in leading magazines for June. So you'll be sure to try it. Because Jell-O puddings are all so velvety smooth, they make the richest, creamiest ice cream you ever tasted. And what a grand choice of flavors. Jell-O chocolate pudding, so rich and chocolatey good. Jell-O butterscotch pudding with that buttery brown sugar taste. And mellow Jell-O vanilla pudding, always a top favorite. Better get all three Jell-O puddings tomorrow. That name Jell-O is a registered trademark of General Foods. J-E-L-L. And now back to Lucille Ball in My Favorite Husband. As we return to the Coopers, we find Liz in a little gold mine called Kramer's Department Store in the hope that she can dig up a few more polka dot dresses for $39.50 and return them to Gordon's Department Store... For fifty nine fifty, she is just entering the dress department. Uh, oh, Miss, I'd like to buy a dress, please. Okay, dearie. Why don't you have in mind? <laughs> huh? uh, that navy blue one with the white polka dots. Okay. What size? Any size will do. It doesn't matter. Any size? Well, who's it for? Uh, a friend. What's the matter? Don't friends come in sizes anymore? <laughs> Just give me one of those dresses. Uh, could she wear a size 20, large? Yes, that'll be fine. How about a small size 10? That'll do just as well. Boy, I'd like to meet that friend of yours. <laughs> Say, uh... Didn't I sell you one of these dresses yesterday? Yes, and I'd like another one. In, in fact, you'd better make it two. Two? How come you don't want two more dresses when you got one just like it? Do you really want to know how come I two? Yeah. I'm one of the Andrews sisters. <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. Which are you, Patty, Maxine, or Laverne? Neither. I'm their brother, Dana. <laughs> Believe you. Now, wait a minute. Here's your dresses, but understand they're on sale. You can't return them. Don't worry, I won't return them. Just charge these. Uh, say, how many more dresses like this do you have? Oh, these are the last, dearie. Oh, that's too bad. I could have handled 20 or 30 more this afternoon. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, Sadie, do you see that dame that just left? She's nuts. <laughs> George, what are you doing here at Gordon's? If you're looking for Liz, she's over at Kramer's. Oh, thanks, but I don't want to see Liz. I'm buying her something for a surprise. Really? What is it? Well, I made her take back a dress this morning, and I got to thinking I was a little rough on her. So I thought I'd buy her one just like it and surprise her. Oh, she told me about it. <laughs> well, I tried to buy the dress Liz wants over at Kramer's, but... The sales girl over there told me she sold the last ones they had to the Andrews sisters. Oh? Well, look, Iris, I'm on my lunch hour. I've got to run. Uh, where's the dress department? Well, it's up on the fifth floor. Oh, thanks. I'll see you later. I'd like to return these two dresses and get a refund. Say, didn't you ask me that once before today? 
Yes. Well, the answer hasn't changed. You go to the same office and see Mr. Quigley. Well, that's just it. Isn't there someone else? If Mr. Quigley saw me with these dresses, he'd scream. Well, the door to the left of Mr. Quigley's is Mr. Bronze, his assistant. Oh, thank you. I'll go there. <laughs> oh, how do you do, Mr. Brown? I'd like to... Oh, dear. <laughs> Mr. Brown is out right now. Oh, it's you. <laughs> what do you want now? <laughs> Well, uh, Mr. Quigley, I'd like to get a refund on these. Ah! <laughs> I told her you would. Two more, Mrs. Cooper? Yes. The same kind? Yes. I can't stand it any longer. I should never have taken this job. I was so happy in ladies' lingerie. <laughs> My money, please. Who was so peaceful there? All you could hear was the rustle of silk broken now and then by the soft snap of a garter. <laughs> if I'm not too monotonous, I'd like my money, please. Oh, Mrs. Cooper, I'm not one to quibble. But... Pardon me, Mr. Quigley, but I've been checking on dress number 808. The very one we have under discussion here. Well, how many did you buy? Uh... Thirty-five. I thought so. Then how is it we now have thirty-six? Well, goodbye, Mr. Quigley. Sit down, Mrs. Cooper. Mrs. Cooper, you brought us in a dress this morning. You've got two more just like it with you now. Would you mind telling me where you got them? Uh, I made them on an old hand loom. <laughs> oh, well, really, do you expect me to believe that you made those three dresses? Would you believe I made two of them? <laughs> no, Mrs. Cooper. I'm not going to accept those two dresses. And what's more, I'm going to give you back the dress you brought in this morning. And Mrs. Cooper... Yes? I'd like my money, please. <laughs> Pardon me, young lady. Could I see those three dresses you have over your arm? They look like they'd be just right for an old lady like me. Hmm? I beg your pardon? But I tried to buy one of those over in the department, but they didn't have my size. Oh, I do love blue and white polka dot dresses, don't you? <laughs> love them? I collect them. <laughs> What size are these? Oh, you probably think I'm the clerk. Uh, see, these dresses aren't for si... Oh, uh, what size do you wear? Well, I'm sort of tiny. I wear a tin. Well, fortunately, I have a tin. No. Yes, and you'd better hurry. This offer is not likely to be repeated. Oh, well, and I'd, I'd, I'd take it. I, I need it to go to a dance tonight. You're going to a dance? Oh, I'd fool you. You should see me dance with my partner. We get around like a couple of 65-year-olds. <laughs> what kind of dances do you do? Well, we all went to Arthur Murray's and learned the Lindy Crawl. You mean the Lindy Hop? Not the way we do it. <laughs> How much is the dress? Uh... Fifty-nine fifty? No, I'll take it. Here's the money. And I'll just run along. You see, I'm in a hurry. All right. See you around the bandstand. Uh, Valterini. <laughs> See you later, sister. <laughs> Goodbye. Say, maybe I can get rid of these other two dresses, too. Oh, I think I like these dresses with the blue and white polka dots. How much are they? Fifty-nine fifty. Psst. Hey, lady. Uh, were you addressing me? Yeah, step in a little closer. You're blocking traffic. Uh, now, don't buy that dress. Step over here. I'm in a position to sell you the very same thing at a sensational reduction in price. Hi, this is my customer. Get away, kid. You bother me. <laughs> well, I'm going to see the manager about this. Is there something wrong with this dress? Who are you? Oh, you've heard of me. Honest Liz Cooper, the biggest used dress dealer in town. <laughs> Is this a used dress? Oh, no. It was just worn by an elderly couple from Pasadena. <laughs> well, uh, uh, give me $39.50 and I'm losing money on the deal. 
<laughs> but I can't pass up a bargain like that. Here's the money. Here's your dress. Sure you couldn't use two of them? Oh, no thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye. Come back tomorrow. I'll give myself a hot foot and have a fire sale. <laughs> <laughs> Young lady, what do you think you're doing? I'm selling polka dot dresses like hotcakes. Want to buy one? Young lady, I am the floor walker. She stole my customer. I did not. Go ahead, search me. <laughs> I have a good mind to take you in to Mr. Quigley. Oh, no, no, not that, please. Well, I'll, I'll give you one more chance. Go on, wait on that customer over there. Oh, uh, oh, I can't wait on him. That's George. What's that? I said I can't wait till I sell him something. Bye, George. Go ahead. I'll be watching you. Oh, here it comes. Maybe this will hide my face. Hey, put back that hat. I was just showing it to a lady. Well, I need it more than you do. But what are you putting it on for? That veil hides your face. I'm in mourning. Why? Because your hair's dyed? <laughs> George doesn't recognize my voice. Uh, can I help you, mister? What? You want I should show you some merchandise, hey? Uh, yes. Say, uh, isn't it unusual for a sales girl to wear a hat with a dark veil? Oh, that. Yeah, it is unusual, kind of. Uh, but I'll let you in on a little secret. See, I'm not a regular sales girl. Oh, you're not? No. I'm an oriental princess gathering material for a book. <laughs> it's practically a saga. Oh. <laughs> really? Take off your veil and let me see your face. No, there is a curse on me. You see, if you looked at my face, there would be a death in your family. <laughs> No. Yes. Well, miss, uh, I'd like to see a dress like the one you have over your arm. Okay. Here. I wonder if this will fit my wife. Yeah, it's just her... I mean, uh, I can just imagine what a fellow like you would marry. I can just see her tall with maybe red hair and a beautiful figure and a gorgeous face. <laughs> Brother, have you got a bad imagination? Oh, Yeah. <laughs> So. Well, you don't have to get upset about it. What's it to you? Well, I'm I'm very sensitive about my imagination, that's all. <laughs> Do you want the dress or don't you, hey? Well, I guess so. Here's the money, but uh, I wish I could be sure it would fit her. Well, I'll tell you what. This dress will fit me perfectly. Does she have a figure like mine, maybe? No. No, she's much dumpier than you are. <laughs> Oh, she is. I mean, uh, oh, she is. She wishes she had a figure like yours. And confidentially, so do I. <laughs> well, of all the... Hey! <laughs> Why'd you slap me? That's for your wife, you big masher. I'll report you to the management. Ah, go run up a down escalator. <laughs> Did you like dinner, dear? Oh, yes, fine. George, thanks for the dress. What dress? The one you're going to surprise me with in a minute. Oh, you found the box in the closet. Yes, and I think you were very sweet to buy it for me. <laughs> oh, honey, you should have seen the sales girl who waited on me. Oh, <laughs> she was a real creep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tell me all about her, George. Oh, who cares about her? Honey, I'm glad you like the dress. And I'll tell you what else I'm going to do. What? I'm going to buy you a hat to go with it, hey. What? <laughs> You're not a very good sales girl, Liz. How do you like that? He knew it all the time, hey. <laughs> Yes, Lucille. 
What's the gag tonight? Tonight, Robert, we travel deep into mining country. I am a little old miner and a little mining music maestro. <laughs> Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling. (laughs) Six months, I ain't done. (laughs) For six months, I ain't done nothing but follow Sam, my faithful mule, around these here mountains. For six months, I ain't done nothing. (laughs) Follow Sam, my faithful mule, around these here mountains. Hello there. Turn around, Sam. We're heading that (laughs) way. Hey, hold on. I'm not a mule. Prove it. (laughs) I'm a census taker. Well, you can't take mine. Folks say I ain't got no senses. (laughs) Oh, Dad, that's a good one, huh? Hey, who are you? I'm a desert rat. You didn't always call me a desert rat. I used to live in the city. What did they call you then? A city rat. (laughs) You live out here all alone? Yep. Just me and my mule. What do you do? Oh, we mine a little and play a little canasta. (laughs) What kind of a mine do you have? A pudding mine. What's a pudding mine? Do you mean to stand there with a sponsor staring you in the face and ask what a pudding mine is? <laughs> Be gad. <laughs> well, well, what's in this pudding mine? I'll give you three guesses. Three of them. Three guesses? Yep, chocolate, vanilla, and butterscotch. <laughs> That must be jello chocolate pudding, delicious with deep down chocolatey goodness. Yup. Jello butterscotch pudding with that buttery brown sugar flavor. Yup. Jello vanilla pudding, rich and smooth as cream. Yup, you wrangled my secret from me. Well, so long, Bub. So long, feller. So long. Well, wait a minute. Come here. Hey, how are we gonna work in about them there jello puddings being nourishing and all that stuff? You mean all you do is add milk and they only take about five minutes to cook? Yeah, to that layer of velvety rich perfection. I don't know. Neither do I. I guess you'll have to do without it. Good night, Bob. You have been listening to My Favorite Husband, starring Lucille Ball with Richard Denning, and based on characters created by Isabel Scott Rorick. Tonight's transcribed program was produced and directed by Jess Oppenheimer, who wrote the script with Madeline Pugh and Bob Carroll, Jr. Original music was composed by Marlon Skiles and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Say, listen to this. It's new, it's new, it can't be beat. The grandest treat you ever did eat. Post, sugar, crisp. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. As a cereal, it's dandy. Or eat it like candy. Post, sugar, crisp. Look for the red, white, and blue cellophane bag with the three little bears. That's Post Sugar Crisp. Today, enjoy this honey of a new cereal that's fun to eat. Be sure to listen to Lucille Ball in My Favorite Husband again next week, presented by... J-E-L-L Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. That's Jell-O. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O pudding. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O cup. Fioca pudding. Yes, sir. Bob Lamont speaking. This is
CBS, where you hear my favorite husband every Sunday, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This episode gives us an example of what was done by many radio shows on occasion, reusing or rewriting a script. Nowadays on television we simply get reruns, and this happens somewhat too on radio. If the original show was recorded, they'd just replay it. Other times they would simply take an old script and reuse it outright. Now in today's episode we had a rewrite. They took the original story and script from episode number 14, which had aired 19 months earlier, and rewrote it. That's what we listen to today. Now, if you want to go back and hear that original version, we aired it on this podcast on December 10th, 2018. So you can look back in the archives and listen to that if you want. Please send your questions and comments to host, classiccomedyotr.com. Come back next Monday for another episode of My Favorite Husband and check in on Wednesday for the next installment of The Pepsodent Show starring Bob Hope. Until next time, in the words of Will Rogers, the road to success is dotted with many tempting parking spaces.